Now, here's the thing about running a heritage railway. Most of the important bits tend to be very, very old. The locomotives, the carriages, the buildings and the infrastructure. Take Falling Sands Viaduct behind me. It was built nearly 150 years ago by gangs of intrepid Victorian navvies. And the years since then, it's taken an absolute battering. I'm Nicky Arwood. I'm a retired civil and highway engineer and I now volunteer for Seven Valley Railway. The viaduct was in a very poor state of repair after well over a hundred years of, of uh, water percolating down through the viaduct. And the reason for this was that the original waterproofing layer that had been installed when it was originally built in 1875 had deteriorated and the drainage had also deteriorated and got blocked up. So all the water which was falling onto the viaduct was percolating down through the brickwork and causing a lot of damage to the brickwork and the structure of the viaduct. And it was in quite a serious condition. The main difficulty for the railway was that it was necessary to slow the, the trains down. And so there was a speed restriction of five miles an hour over the viaduct just to make sure that it was safe to run. But the difficulty would be that if it got any worse, then it wouldn't have been possible to run trains at all. The project cost one and a quarter million pounds and this was funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund and very generous local donors who collectively contributed about 400,000. First phase of the restoration involves some heavy civil engineering works to remove all of the track and all the fill which is above the arches so that we could get down to the top of the arches and then apply a new waterproofing layer to catch the water and run it out through drainage points. Phase two was then the attention turned to the outside of the viaduct and this involved repointing huge areas of the brickwork, replacing areas of damaged brickwork and in some cases where the brickwork in the arches had sort of delaminated uh, it was necessary to put some deep anchors in to pin the arch structures together to make them fully capable of carrying the loads of the locomotives and trains running over the viaduct and all of this had to be done using rope access rather than erecting a huge scaffold all the way across the valley which would have been prohibitively expensive. So the contractor employed specialist people who are quite happy to dangle from ropes and carry out all the operations which are necessary. So the raking out of the mortar joints, uh, cutting out bits of damaged brickwork and piecing in new brickwork and pointing it up where it was really seriously deteriorated. when the viaduct was built. The original designers of the viaduct included a nice corbelled piece along underneath the parapets. And the purpose of that was to deflect rainwater and keep it off the structure. But for some reason during the early 1980s, British Railways removed that when they demolished and rebuilt the parapet from the Budley end. And they got as far as the, the point where the viaduct spans the river. And then that feature was still in existence. We thought it would be uh, very fitting and to improve the heritage and heritage of the viaduct to reinstate that feature. When the parapets were demolished and rebuilt, the original pilasters at the, at the Budley M were, were replaced with just very plain brickwork. So that feature was lost. And to restore the proper heritage and make it look like the viaduct was when it was originally built, the pilasters were rebuilt at the Budley end. There were some challenges, unexpected ones. Obviously the most significant one was when the national lockdown occurred and we had to stop work for a period of about five or six weeks. But when government allowed construction to restart, our contractor remobilised and uh, was able to get on with the work. But then, when they were working one day, taking out some bricks, some lovely little bats flew out from behind the brickwork. And bats being a protected species meant that we had to stop work whilst that was investigated. It was discovered that there wasn't just one, there were about half a dozen living on this lovely viaduct. We've got some special bat boxes so they can live quite happily and there'll be probably more accommodation for bats on this viaduct now than there was previously. Without this viaduct being operational, not only would it have got to such a poor state that it would have been necessary to, to close it down and stop trains from running over it, which would have been catastrophic for the Seven Valley Railway, 
But now having restored it to its full operational significance, it's possible to run the trains at their full speed over the viaduct and obviously keep Kidderminster, Bewdley and all the stations up the line to Bridge North connected. It's a magnificent viaduct, isn't it? And it's just a tribute to the work which all of the contractor staff and the volunteer staff have put in to be able to save this viaduct for the future, for the next hundred years probably. It's not over yet and there's all sorts of excitement to come as part of the Falling Sands project. There's a mobile exhibition inside a specially adapted brake van, oral history podcasts and at the Engine House at Highley, an exhibition looking at the early history and people of the Seven Valley Railway. Mm -hmm.